Welcome to Sculpture Studios. In this project we were approached by Darren Ward from the Madden Two Swords group and the job was creating a large landscape set for the Lego company. Rather than going to the outside theme parks, this was designed for a smaller mini land project indoors at the Trafford Centre up in Manchester. He sent us detailed floor plans where the sets were going to be joined and be positioned, with all the different widths, lengths and heights of each platform, and we began mapping the whole set out in polystyrene. Darren sent us wooden plans that were CNC cut, so that we could build around his exact measurements. We cut out the cubist forms of the bases, and started creating the different levels that were going to be added on top. As well as the six different zones, Manchester, Blackpool, the Lake and Peak District, the North England and Mining Cluster, there was going to be a large rock archway that bridges the void between the two areas, and it's built to cover the dividing wall. If you've seen any of our other videos, you can probably tell that this isn't our usual workshop. We've hired out a barn, not too far from our studio, that will give us enough space so that we can lay the whole set out. This isn't uncommon for us, as we often hire out larger spaces when we've got more than one job on the go, and particularly large projects like this one, and this was a lovely one to take on. Nice and big with a lot of carving involved, a forte Aidan prefers, and a real challenge in terms of size and accuracy. As well as being a clean material, in the sense that it's not sticky, wet or corrosive, polystyrene is also a very messy material in its own way. From these images alone, you can see the amount of cleaning up needed after each day of carving. It's a really enjoyable process, but it really does get everywhere. Around the edge of the majority of sets, there were either brickwork walls or cliff edges, all of which were carved from polystyrene. Once everything's finished and approved by Darren, we begin with the fiberglassing process. The whole set needs to be completely covered in sticky back foil as a barrier between the poly and the resin. This is a very large area and we need to make sure that every inch is covered to avoid any breaches. When we say we cover it in foil, people often underestimate how long something like this can actually take, especially with this kind of coverage area and the guarantee that there aren't any gaps. When it's all sealed, we use a Class O rated resin so that it's fireproof for indoor use and we apply 4 ounces of glass fibre mat on the whole job. Around the bases, where the set might be kicked or bumped into by the public, we go on with a 6 ounce build up for extra strength. As this set needed to fit through not only sets of doors, but multiple stairways as well, it was carved in such a way that it could be broken down so that the seam lines follow the natural curves of the landscape and the cracks in the stone. This meant that when it was put back together, we'd be able to make up the joints so that a minimum seam line was visible. At this particularly cold and damp time of year, we needed to make sure the resin went off, as we had a deadline to meet. We couldn't waste any time waiting for the resin to struggle on its own in the winter weather, so we helped it along with hair dryers and heat guns. When it's all set, Aiden goes over the whole job with a spray-on flexible concrete render to lose the glass fibre matte texture and create a realistic rock surface. Here you can see a few of the pieces, broken down into manageable sections, and we make sure to mark and number them, so that we know what goes where when it comes to putting it back together. On the Peak District landscape, we've created a space for a canal, and this needs to be watertight, as water is going to be added once it gets to site. Working mechanised locks are going to be installed, and these will allow small boats to move up and down the river. On the Blackpool Pleasure Beach area, the client requested a section of water to be made from glass to resemble the waves and the tide. For some reason, to get this made elsewhere worked out to be ridiculously expensive, so Aidan experimented himself with clear resins and ended up using a translucent gel coat with a tinge of blue and caught it just before it went off. He sculpted it using hot air and blowing it to get the desired wave effect. This worked out extremely well visually, saved the client unnecessary cost and really did the piece justice. We begin painting the set, going over with various greens for the grass tops and dark browns for the cliff, as though the earth has literally been dug out. We go over the cliff edges with sandpapers so that it brings out the high spots in the texture to resemble the rocky cliff material. We organise transport for three 40 foot articulate lorries and three of us from the Sculpture Studios team went up to the Trafford Centre in Manchester for the week to set it all up. There were a lot of alterations made throughout the whole process to ensure that everything could actually get into the building, let alone fit in the space upstairs. It's frustrating working around different trades that are still doing their jobs when it's our turn to be installing ours. We had electricians and model makers and maintenance crew all over the place, but we got it all fitted in the end, and it was art worked up around the edges to blend in better with the walls behind. When the cliffs were first carved, they were designed so that the public wouldn't trip up the edges, and we also had to allow space for wheelchair access. This wasn't the first job we've made for the Madden Two Swords group, but it was the first for the LEGO company, and with such a large project to undertake, it was good that they could trust Sculpture Studios to complete the work. Darren, our main client, had a lot of participation with keeping up to date with what we were doing, and any new information and alterations to be made, but ultimately it came down to letting us get on with it, to complete it on time, and to the standard they were after. 
The set was durable so no bumps, kicks and sticky fingers would do much damage, and the set can always be hooved for dust and dirt, and re-art worked in the future. Sometimes things look good on paper, but don't always work out when they're trying to be brought into 3D, and at other times, it's not until you see the full sculptural finish before you get the full effect, and this was certainly one of those. The set looked fantastic when it was all finished with all the LEGO Miniland models, all the components and vehicles moving around, and when it was all lit. It's great to be part of creating an interactive exhibit that allows children to feel big for a change and gives them something to actually engage with, rather than just walk past and ignore. It's always rewarding to get off a job like this in the first place, but it's double rewarding to see the work appreciated, so it's really worthwhile in the end. We'd like to thank Legoland for the project, and Darren Ward especially from the Two Swords group for coming to Sculpture Studios. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.